What happened to you? I don't remember. I love you, but people change. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. You okay? It's just, I haven't been feeling like myself. <sighs> like myself. Significant Other, Rated R. Original movie streaming October 7th on Paramount+. Plus. Football season is officially back, and you can get into all the action now with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Call an all-new customer, sign up using the promo code SMOKE, and bet $5 on any football team to win, and receive an additional $200 in free bets if your bet cashes. You can also win big by creating your very own same-game parlay. Combine multiple bets from the same game for a shot at a big payday. For those of you in a state where sports betting is not yet available, don't forget about DraftKings Daily Fantasy, where they've been innovating even more ways for you to win some cash this football season. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code SMOKE and receive $200 in free bets if their bet hits after placing the $5 pregame football wager. That's promo code SMOKE only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Welcome back, all the smoke, Jack. L.A. The, we got new lighting and shit. Like it feels like we elevating right now. Back to back, bitch. We back, man. Season four. Yes, sir. I ain't got no sweaty hands. You got dry hands. You did. God must be good. I'm trying to tell you. Everyone's been checking out the shit we shot in Vegas. I hope you guys have been enjoying uh, our Vegas run. Legends. But now, yeah. Shout out Legends, the Wynn Hotel. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now we back to live guests. And this is someone, when I thought of this show, I was like, I can't wait to get this person because I think he's such a misunderstood person. It took us four motherfucking seasons to get him. We've been riding for him the hey, whole time. you already know. But he's here. Welcome to the show. Dwight Howard. Hey! Big hey. Yeah. What's up, bro? Appreciate Charles, it. What's good? up, man? I What's am amazing. It's good to see you, man. I ain't it's seen you in a minute. good to see you guys, you too, good? man. Yeah. I want to get right to it, man. You were telling us this crazy shit you were doing in the summer, so share it with the world, and when, 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 when can the rest of us watch it? Oh, man. So this summer, I decided to go to Jordan, Wadi Rum, Jordan. Middle East. Middle East. 115 degrees during the day. Just bored. 40 during the night. Mm. Um, and I decided to do this Special Forces show. Uh, and everybody's like, bro, you crazy. Like, you could die. And yeah, I could have literally died over there in the show that I was doing. So it wasn't like it was a reality show where we go home to our nice hotel and mm -hmm. we chill. No, sir. We really in the shit the whole mm -hmm. day, every day, all day. What kind of stuff were you guys doing? The last day I got kidnapped. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how many I'll how start many days? with there. How many days? Uh, well, I was there for 10 days total. Uh -huh. um, and some people was getting put out the first day. <laughs> some people was getting put out the first day, but uh, Imagine the last day. big ass, knowing how strong he is. You just, you had to let him kill They had guns. Uh, they oh, tied okay. us up. Oh, that, that was for real then. Um, okay. So the last day, it was me and my partner. And her name is Carly Lloyd. She's a soccer player. Won uh, two, I think, uh, world championships. Uh, it was me and her. We trekking through the desert. We gotta trek 3,000 meters through the desert and get from one checkpoint to another. And right before we went and started doing that, I had just learned how to use a map and a compass. So, oh, oh, excuse me. What's the difference between trek and running and walking? Like, well, I mean, trekking is like you're going up, up hills, down hills. We hiding under rocks. We hiding under, like, in valleys because there's dogs chasing us, black hawk uh, helicopters. Looking for us, it's people you got on foot. Matt Damon shooting at you, bro. Yeah, right it was some people like that. Does oh, so, you know, shit. that was the last day. But I got set on fire, tear gas. I had to run up this. <laughs> Yo, he was telling this shit earlier. I'm like, yeah, and you, like, see, you volunteer for this shit? I did volunteer. When I'm Are telling people I'm about to go do this, they like, bro, what the hell is wrong with you? And, you and said I'm you like, got submerged in a car, and you yeah, were, you I, got, I wasn't like this. I had to hold on to a, a the, the a steering wheel. Mm -hmm. And they dropped the truck in the water, and I had to stand there, was sit there like this, till it got fully submerged in the water, 
and I had to wait till the staff sergeant came and tapped my shoulder, mm -hmm. and then I had to run, take my seatbelt off, swim out the back, and jump up and say, number 13 is okay. I wasn't even a name. I was just a number. Yeah. But it was the craziest thing and the best thing I ever did because I w really went to go see if I could break myself, see where I'm, where I'm at mentally and physically and spiritually and try to go beyond that. So doing that really tested every part of me. Mm. Like, man. What did you learn about yourself? It's not like I, I can really camp. do anything right. with my mind no matter what it is. Shit. You know, one day we had to write death letters. And that was probably the hardest thing emotionally we had to do. So we started out the day getting tear gas. We go in this room, take off the mask. Staff sergeant asks us questions, and it's like something is squeezing the life out of us. So by the time we leave there, our spirits is done. Mm. Then we have to go fight. So we get back to the hotel. We rest for a little bit. Well, not the hotel. I'm sorry. That's what I called it, but to make it seem better. But... <laughs> uh, we had to put on these bags and run about two miles up the mountain and through this valley. They would take the bags off and we had to just scrap. Mm. And after that, we had to go write death letters to our to our families and then read them out loud. Mm. So that was like, it really broke me down. But it taught me a lot about myself and fear, how to really overcome it and use fear as a tool. Mm. You know, people... I allow know. fear to overtake them, mm -hmm. but we can use fear as a, a ladder. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, let's say you was fighting somebody that was a giant, eight foot tall. You might be scared, but shit, that fear gonna give you enough strength mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. go beat his ass. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that we learn. And then how to control that, control the anger, control the fear, control all our emotions into one quick moment and then let it go. Mm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we get so caught up in the rage and the anger that we... Hold on to it. Yeah, but we had to learn how to be in that moment and then let it go. Mm. And after mm. that, I had PTSD, like, uh, crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. Uh, you just, he uh, just let me know. I ain't in control of my anger. Where, where can we watch? When, <laughs> when is this coming out? Where can I we watch it? all that. Uh, it'll be out in probably about January, I think. Okay. Yeah. We'll make sure you guys stay on the lookout for that. NBA season is upon us. Um, you still got it in you. Where's your mind at right now as far as possibly talking to teams coming back? Could oh. be done, like Well, I I wanna play. Like what I year enjoy would this the be? game. Not to cut you off. What year would this be? It'll be year nineteen. Damn. So yeah, I I wanna play, but at the same time, it's like no teams are gonna really allow me to play. Uh that's how I've been feeling, you know, from the last situation with the Lakers. You know, I felt like I did enough to help them win the championship, Definitely. to really 1, deserve a spot on the team and a chance to start and get big minutes, and it didn't happen. So, you know, after that, I was like, man, I don't want to have to bust my ass for another whole summer, train three a days, go on a crazy diet, do all this shit, and then get back to a team and sit on the bench when mm -hmm. I could really help somebody win mm -hmm. and still play like I ain't lost a beat. It's just I sit on the bench, so mm -hmm. people don't see that. Teams don't see that, you know, and it's been like, damn, do I want to just call it quits and do some other stuff or, you know, go back at it and show people I still got it. What would uh, you want to do? Man, I really just, I want to enjoy my life. <laughs> First and foremost. Uh, my kids getting older. Mm -hmm. You know, I really want to be there for them. But, hell, I want to go out on top for mm -hmm. real. Um, I still got it. I still can hoop. What has the transition been like for you? Because you were arguably one of the biggest stars in the league, top two, three, four players in the league for, for a good run. Mm -hmm. And then kind of transitioning into a role player with all due respect. How was that? I mean, that's not a physical transition. That's a mental transition. How oh, was that yeah. transition for you? <laughs> Man, it was tough. I remember uh, I ain't really told nobody this story. I remember, uh, except my close people, going back to the Lakers and trying to get a job the second time with them and meeting with uh, the GM. It's probably about four or five players, Rondo, AD, a couple more players. And Kirk says to me, you're not Dwight Howard no more. Who said that? Kirk. Kirk Ramis. Oh. 
So he says, you're not Dwight Howard no more. And don't expect to be Dwight Howard when you come to the team. And I'm like, damn, how you not gonna want me to be myself? And it really just hit me like, dang, I just gotta shut my mouth and do what I'm asked to do. And just not allow anything to affect me winning this championship. Mm -hmm. And that was real hard, you know, to say, shit, I'm not gonna get the ball in the post. I'm not gonna get a lot of minutes. It ain't gonna be that way for me. So let me go and get that out of my mind, you know, put my ego away and shit, just go win the championship. How long, how hard was that though? Like I said, to me, you've never really been too much of an ego, but. Yeah, you it wasn't, it didn't take that long because okay. I really wanted to just win mm -hmm. and come back and show people in LA, like the first time I came, I was hurt damn near the whole season, tore my labrum. Uh, I don't think nobody in the world would play with a torn labrum. Um, but playing with that the whole season, just coming off the worst back surgery you could ever have as a player. And I personally, I even told you, I was like, bro, you coming back too soon. I, I did come back too soon, but I'm like, man, I want to come back and show everybody I can, you know, right. get back to the court mm -hmm. and play. And uh, shit, it just didn't work out. Yeah. So when I came back this time, I was like, nah, I ain't gonna let nothing stop this one. Mm. And we got it. But why, 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 excuse me, Matt, why people say it's ego when really you didn't you didn't put in the work to get that respect? Right. Come on, you know man. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's yeah. why I would I wouldn't call it ego. You put in the work. And mo most players that put in the work and done what you've done and should be a shoe in Hall of Famer, they shouldn't have to go through that. You know You're what I'm saying? You're absolutely right. You know what I'm saying? They shouldn't have to go through that, and that's the fucked up part of the game. It's and like, but it's like for me. I felt like if I would say something or be open about how I felt about the whole situation, yeah. it'll make it worse. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. any situation that has happened with me during my career, for me, I'm like, you know what? I know a lot of this shit ain't what it really is. People mm -hmm. just talking. So I'm gonna just keep my mouth shut and go yeah. on about my business because it ain't gonna battles. stop me from doing what I do. Gotta pick and choose them. We're gonna get to yeah. definitely more basketball, but I want to know, I mean, do we, is there a chance to see you um, in the WWE by any chance? I always thought you were like an action figure. This is one of the strongest <laughs> motherfuckers. I was telling someone the story before. So when we was in Orlando, we was in Toronto, and this motherfucker was shooting half-court shots from his sitting down. Oh, yeah, like sitting it was nothing. <laughs> no effort, no nothing. And it was me, who was me, Sweet Lou, Vince, and Jameer all trying yeah. to tackle you in one second. And Brandon Bass. Yeah. Brand, and Brandon yeah. Bass is strong as a motherfucker. Yeah, he this was. dude threw all of us off him like we were children. And I just looked, I took a, you know me, I'm a shit talker. I took a lot. I was just like, I don't remember that. that. Ain't right, bro. <laughs> y'all tried to duct tape me yeah, while I was down. Yeah, we were trying to duct tape. Yeah. That's what it was. We were trying to, I didn't yeah. remember. Yeah. We were trying to duct tape him, bro. He threw Brandon Bass, me, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know if Vince was there. Maybe Rashard and Jameer's little yeah, ass. Yeah, all and four y'all trying all to like go like crazy we children, and grab bro. me. I was, was like, nah, get off me. But it, that's how he did it. <laughs> get off me. Shoot, bro. It was crazy. But uh, back to it. Is there a chance you we could see you uh, doing? I think you. Yeah. I mean, your personality. Yeah. yeah. You're big as a you're, you're a big man. Uh, I would definitely uh, enjoy being uh, a real wrestler like that. Like my whole life growing up as a kid, you know, me and my brother wrestled. I played around acting like I was the Hulk, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And then, you know, my nickname is Randy Savage. So <laughs> it tell you right there how so much the I love wrestling. That's the room we be calling you? In the room, yeah, Randy Savage. That was my <laughs> shit. So uh, <laughs> why not? You know, I really enjoy the crowd. I enjoy entertaining mm -hmm. people. I enjoy the fans and stuff like that. And the atmosphere is crazy. Yeah. I went to Summer SummerSlam this summer and... Uh, I got a chance to do some promos for wrestling. Mm -hmm. And Triple H and uh, Stephanie McMahon was there. She had just became the new CEO mm -hmm. of WWE. And I did my promo and they was like, man, that was the best promo of right. the whole the whole tryout, man. Mm -hmm. Do you really want to wrestle? And I was like, I think it'll be great. You know, I feel like there's so many other avenues that I can do. And after doing this thing that I did in the, with the military this summer, it's like, my mind is the most mm -hmm. valuable Sharp. thing. It's and it's the strongest. And mm -hmm. with that, I could do it, do anything. It's the sharpest tool that I have mm -hmm. in the tech and the shit. So, if wrestling can happen, man, I'm gonna go get that belt. WrestleMania is in L.A. This this next WrestleMania is in L.A. Yes, that might be it. That might be your uh, your coming your, your welcome party. We were talking that, about it last <laughs> night, me and uh, Dylan and uh, Jelani. I was like, it was a lot of stuff that Shaq did. 
but it's a lot of stuff that he couldn't do. That everything gonna go to him. He gonna take all that now. Mm-hmm. Every, they gonna throw. We was just talking about all that stuff that Shaq couldn't do because he was too big. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? They got an athletic, more charismatic, uh, just just a sillier version of that that they gonna love. <laughs> I don't know about right. silly. They both. No, they, they both they silly. Both, no, they both silly yeah. as a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you. I think it's yeah. too kind of silly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They both yeah. silly as a motherfucker. But he no, gonna but get bro, all that. that no, I believe. Yeah. And, and I knew it was like I said. I got a chance to only play with him for a year, but just seeing him, I'm just like, yo. When I heard he was going to LA, I was like, first of all, make sure you're healthy. But he's gonna take the world by storm because he is a big that like he was made for the big stage you know mm-hmm. what i mean his personality all that shit so it was a it was a it'll be a perfect match uh, i've been living in the a since 2003 your home atlanta talk about your upbringing what was it like man uh well i went to the same school my whole life mm-hmm. from kindergarten all the way up to 12th grade uh i started out in college park and in the area that we lived, it was so bad that, you know, my parents wouldn't even let us walk down the street to the gas station. And so since we couldn't go nowhere, I just played basketball all day. You know, I sat at home. At first, I didn't have no goals, so I had a Magic Johnson v- VCR uh, VHS tape about training, and I just trained all day. And that's where I really got my skills at. I tried to stay out of everything that was going on around me. Mm-hmm. People getting killed, ambulances, hearing gunshots and all that stuff. I was like, no, nah, I can't. That ain't me. Then the school I went to was a small Christian school, but it was in a really bad area, Ben Hill mm-hmm. and Ben Hill in Atlanta. Uh, so uh, my, my class happened to be the baddest class in the school, and I happened to be the silliest mm-hmm. person in the school, and I'm the tallest, so they took that as me being bad. So they ended up taking us to Rice Street Mm -hmm. uh, and we had to do like scared straight. Mm -hmm. So I'm going in the scared straight and they like, yeah, this big ass nigga in here, we gonna get him. (laughs) I said, I'm playing basketball and I'm not doing this. (laughs) So after that, I really honed in to the basketball man. And my dad, he was a cop, so he was always working. My mom, she worked at the courthouse. So I said, I did not want to be in them two places. Mm, for real. And I stayed in the gym, and I told my dad at 10, I wanted to go to the NBA. And he said, well, if you really want to do it, you got to sacrifice everything. Mm-hmm. And I said, man, that's easy, because that's how much I wanted. So he said, well, make a plan. And I said, all right, bet. And I wrote down all my goals. Wrote, I wrote down I wanted to be the number one pick in the draft. Mm-hmm. I at 10? Win, at 10 years old. That's dope. Wrote I wanted to be the first pick in the draft, the number one player in high school, coming out of high school. I wanted to put my school and my city on the map. Like, I wrote all these goals down. I put it over my bed. And, you know, every day when I walked into my room, when I woke up, I just looked at it like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. And that's what I worked on every day. If I wasn't working on being the number one pick, and I wasn't, I wasn't trying to be, mm, that's dope. you know, Dwight Howard. So and I had so many people telling me you wasn't going to make it. Mm-hmm. I had somebody, at, one of my teachers at school tell me, you was just a dumb jock. You weren't going to be shit. Mm. And I said, I'm going to make you eat your words. Mm-hmm. I'm going to show you. Mm-hmm. And I had cops tell me. I had firemen tell me. I used to play, play uh, in the streets. And people just tell me you wasn't going to make it. So I used all that ammunition. Mm-hmm. You know, from 10 on up till I got ready to get drafted. Then, when I got 15, I broke my leg. I was probably about 5'11 at the time. At 15? Yeah, I broke my leg. Damn. And I grew to 6'11 with my leg broke. What they put, they, they must have huh? put something in. Y'all about to say, they must have put something in. They must have yeah, they shot, shot you up. up or something. Yeah, no, nah, it, was, it was the craziest summer in my life. This was really, after that, I promised myself I would always stay humble. I would never let the money, whatever happened to me, change me. Um, so I just started playing with the Atlanta Celtics. Mm-hmm. And this is when Josh and Randolph was, they was at the time number one, number two. I was just coming on the scene. And, um, is that Shavlik Randolph? No, Randolph Morris. Oh, okay. Yeah, he went to Kentucky. He ended yeah. up going to China and winning mm-hmm. championships. So uh, one day I'm at Sandtown Gym, and I go up and try to dunk. Somebody block my dunk, come down, break my leg, and everything stopped for me right there. No more, no more basketball. 
the little chicks I was talking to, they stopped talking to me because they was like, <laughs> he ain't going to be shit no more. <laughs> so I was like, damn, this is crazy. I said, you know what? I got to really lock in and I ain't going to let nothing change me. So after that, I got up every morning at 4 o'clock. I was on the track. And I was running. I knew I had to be in shape because I was like, these niggas is big as shit in the league. And I'm skinny. I ain't had no muscles then. So I said, I got to be able to outrun all of them. So I tried to get in the best shape. Then after I ran every morning, I went to the gym. And Deion Glover was my trainer. So he was tough. we played one-on-one -on -one every day. He worked on every skill that I needed to get to the league. Then after that, I went to the weight room and tried to get big. and It just wasn't working. Mm -hmm. So I, I couldn't lift in high school. And then... After that, it led up to being the number one pick. Welcome to Fresh Ball Fall. It's a season of pumpkin spice and making sure your crotch looks nice. That means sipping cider in the fall breeze and using Manscaped products to trim your balls with ease. That's right. Today's show is brought to you by Manscaped, a company here to make sure all your foliage isn't the only thing shedding its excess leaves. Heck, even Mother Nature knows it's time to lose excess clutter for the fall. Whether you're brand new or already with us at Manscaped, you can use the crown jewel to take care of your family jewels. The Platinum Package 4.0. With this glorious package, you can align all your entire hygiene routines with one swoop. Inside the 10-part Platinum Package is everything you need to know and love about the Performance Package. Plus, some shower goodies included to elevate your grooming game to Platinum. The Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer and weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmers feature proprietary skin safe technology to protect the delicate parts and holes. Both are waterproof so you can keep scaping even as the weather's changing. In addition to shaving, you can now completely upgrade your shower routine with the ultra premium body wash and ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. It'll have your skin and hair feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. Don't forget to apply their aluminum free ultra premium deodorant. And don't worry, it's not pumpkin spice. It's cologne quality fragrance. But we shouldn't save our signature scent for our pits. Use the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner to make sure your go-to smell is top shelf and not sweaty balls. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Platinum Package 4.0. The Manscaped Boxers and Shed Travel Bag, both specially made to hold your goodies. Get the Platinum Package this fall. These products are guaranteed to be hits for your dangly bits. Go to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping with the promo code SMOKE only at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com when you use the code SMOKE. Manscaped has cleared out the leaves and it's time for your tree trunk to shine. Crazy. Any other sports growing up besides basketball? Yeah, I played baseball. I was a pitcher, pitched about 90 miles an hour. Then I played football. That was my shit right there. I was defensive end. I used to love mm -hmm. tackling people. I wanted to hit people mm -hmm. and break legs. I broke a couple legs when I was young. Uh, Big overgrown ass. Yeah, <laughs> I was small though. I wasn't like that's really what, that's, tall, that's, but that's I just, yeah, just I wanted to hit, hit everybody. That was the only way I could let out my aggression. So I used to just want to hit people, uh, but not in a bad way to hurt them. But mm -hmm. just hit them. Yeah, it's part of the game. Yeah. So uh, my mom just she made me stop playing football because I was really trying to <laughs> destroy out there. So that's when I went to basketball, and I used to never dunk the ball. Cause y'all imagine it? No. <laughs> yeah, I swear to God, I never dunked the ball. All I did was shoot it out the glass. They used to call me Windex Man. Cause I used to get all the rebounds and I used to do everything out the glass. Clapping boards. That's it, that's it, that's it. So then um, somebody said, you should start dunking. Then once I started dunking, I never stopped. I was about to say, huh? I never stopped after that. Who, who did you look up to, any idols? Uh, My favorite player was Wilt Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. Good one. When I was young, I had this robot, and he used to always talk to me. He always say, Wilt Chamberlain, 100 rebounds. And I was like, who is Wilt Chamberlain? And then I just, I just started watching his tapes, and I wanted to be like Wilt Chamberlain. Then when I moved to L.A., his house was actually right next to mine. So oh, really? That was like some inspiration mm, for me. I just look out my window and I could see his house like, mm. dang, I got to go win because we'll watch mm -hmm. him. That's dope. Uh, so you decide not to go to college. Mm -hmm. uh, were you seriously, did you consider college at all or you Hell knew I'm going no. straight? Hell school. no. I'm done. I never wanted to go to college. Okay. Uh, not because 
college isn't cool or good for some people, but it wasn't for me. You just wanted to get straight to the money. I wanted to go to the NBA. That was my dream. That was what I had wrote down for mm -hmm. my vision. And I felt like college would have just been a distraction for me. Um, I did visit a couple schools, but I just didn't like, I thought it was going to be too much. Mm-hmm. Cause I was with Chamberlain. Yeah, you need to stay focused. So yeah, I had to stay focused time. when I was young. You said, cause, I'm, cause I'm with Chamberlain. <laughs> uh, what was that? What, I mean, what was that process like? You're jumping from a, a, a Christian school in Atlanta mm -hmm. into to the, the league to the number one pick. Like, yeah. what was that transition like? What was the process like leading up to the draft? It was crazy, man. Um, my school, I only had 16 people in my graduating class. Little school. So. I ain't know nothing. I was green to the whole world because I stayed in a box. Mm -hmm. I played basketball and I was with my class and my, my team all the time. And so going from that to being in Orlando and being the franchise player, it was like I was growing up in front of everybody. So all my mistakes, everything that mm -hmm. I was doing, you everybody 18? was seeing. 18? 18. I just turned 18. So. I didn't really have a chance to grow up or make mistakes nah. and really le learn from them, you know. Mm -hmm. My mistakes were seen by the whole world and everything was judged based off that, you know. So for me, it was like, damn, after all this stuff, I got to really, really not, I ain't want to do nothing, be involved with no people, just mm -hmm. stick to myself because it just became a lot. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on them possibly lowering the entry age you can, to go so back kids can go to 18? back yeah to straight the league i like it um but i just think that a lot of those players need guidance mm. um and i think that it's bad that the nba is not having teams of more vets on them because i think that these younger players Absolutely. need guides Absolutely. we've been saying that um, the past two years i had some great teammates when i was young but i think they were still they were young as well, and it's kind of mm -hmm. like the generation outside of basketball. You have uh, young women raising young kids, mm -hmm. so you have young men raising younger men, and it's like none of us are really getting the proper guidance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I feel like this next generation they need guidance. So these 18-year-olds that's coming in and stuff like that, they have the proper guidance, the proper teaching. Man, it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. Um. You get off to a little bit of a slow start. First three seasons, missed the playoffs. What was that like for you, someone who was accustomed to winning? Uh, number one pick now, the face of the franchise, mm -hmm. and you guys can't get to the playoffs. How frustrating was that for you? Uh, I just felt like it was growing pains. I felt like it was kind of like what I went through in high school where our team was pretty good, but we didn't win the championship. So I've, I always looked at it like next year is going to be better, you know, we need to add this piece. We need to add this piece. We need. Would they come to you early on and ask you that, even though you were no. young? No, they didn't. Get I fun. never got asked anything <laughs> <laughs> at all. Not my no time with the magic. Not until I asked to be traded, and then <laughs> it was like now they want to ask me questions. So right. then I was like, "Well, this ain't cool. Y'all ain't talked to me in eight years. Mm. So how I'm supposed to, you know, think now? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So." I think a lot of people got that whole situation in Orlando twisting and turned upside down. And after that, it kind of like really, I think it messed up my image, you know, with fans and people like that. Well, talk to us because, I mean, there was there was some head button with you and Stan. Stan was a uh, was a character boy. He I'd was. I'd say Derek was a but great X and O's guys, but mm -hmm. just outside of that, like personality, kind of managing and dealing with people was a okay. little, eh. Uh, but like I said, that's one of the reasons why I want to talk to you because I felt like you were such a misunderstood person, like not a bad but bad bone in your body. And to me, sometimes mm -hmm. that hurts you because you're such a nice guy. Like yeah. you're not a mean person. And I say, I wish Dwight was an asshole because it would be. Mm -hmm. Couldn't mm -hmm. you imagine how much uglier it could get if he was like if he was mean, floor. right? If he was mean, but yeah. I know you're I like wish, a, you're really yeah. like a kind yeah. soul. Yeah. You know what I mean? So talk to us about that experience and how you feel. You know, through the way media put shit out and you know little snippets they would get here and there to kind of you know, kind of painted a bad picture of who you actually were. I really hated it, to be honest with you. Um, the whole stand situation, I was really upset at how we ended that season when we was in the finals. Um, but 
you know, I knew that we just played a team that had more experience, so mm -hmm. we couldn't blame it on anybody. Mm -hmm. And after that season, um, the year I wanted to get traded, I just asked quietly to Otis, I want a new change uh, for my life. I've been in Orlando eight years. I just want to change the direction. I felt like I had a lot of yes people around me at the time. And no offense to those people now, but I felt like I wasn't going to mature and become a better person. So almost in a bubble again. Yeah, so I just felt like I needed to to change my ways and move. So I guess they took that as me saying Orlando wasn't good enough and I hated my teammates, I hated the city and all this stuff. And it became like a story. Mm -hmm. And for me, I looking back on it, I should have just said, no, this is not what's going on. This is what it is. But this is early social media, though, so it's yeah. really whatever they put out there, you don't really have a voice yet, really. Yeah, but you know? I just allowed too much to happen. Uh, it's just a lot of situations in the NBA, well, in my NBA career, that I've allowed to just happen and people talk, and I didn't really say too much on it because I'm like, man, why? Why talk? But then the people's perception forms their reality, right. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm over here living in my reality, like, this shit ain't bothering me, I ain't think about it, but to everyone else, like, that's team, they, teams, are, yeah, teams, teams are people, seeing this, yeah. all these people are seeing this, and they like, and Dwight like this, or he doing this, and I'm like, this ain't even nowhere near how I am or close to the truth. So I wish I would have said more things, but I'm in, in my mind, I'm like, nah, let me just focus on, things that matter to me and stuff like that. But, you know, I hated how that situation in Orlando was because it really was a great time down there. You, We was together down mm -hmm. there. I felt like we was really a team. We had a, a real team. good team. That was the year you yeah. guys came off the finals with the the, the, mm -hmm. the Lakers. So the next year, me, Vince, and I think Jason Williams, yeah. right? Yeah, Ball and game. I just felt like we needed more time together. And we was getting older. We just needed to add, you know, mm -hmm. just a couple more pieces. But we had a core. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the media and people were just trying to put me against the team. And I hurt my back that year and people on the team thinking I'm not really hurt, that I'm out partying and doing other stuff. And I'm like, I ain't even that type of dude to be doing some shit like that to my teammates. Like, that ain't even me. So it was just so much going on. And just looking back, I'm like, man, I really should have just stepped up and said something. Mm. But I was in my own little world thinking about my kids or, you know, basketball or just chilling. I wasn't thinking about what people were saying or right. stuff like that. I just tried to keep that out of my mind. But hindsight, I, I should have said some things. Talking about that team in 2009, mm -hmm. talk about that team, East Conference champs. Hold on, before you do that, we could talk about that, but I want to make sure we talk about, too, um, how we switched the game plan going in the Eastern Finals. But let's talk about that season first. Uh, it's all when we uh, didn't we like remember what Stan said something like you know we're going up against yeah the when good. we was playing against Boston yeah and but we remember started, we smacked them we smacked yeah we them. beat the shit dog out of shit out of them like, smacked it, Atlanta smacked, was, smacked I, Atlanta I don't know him and two other his teammates at the same time <laughs> they did nasty <laughs> and then we beat the hell out of you I was about a dub we got with a but we got you did it. you was killing y'all swept the shit out of yeah them, no question yeah so I, we get to Boston. And I'm like, let's keep doing what we doing. We ain't no, we beating teams by like 20 plus points a yes. game. Yes, and Stan's like, no, we're going to switch the whole thing up. Which I stopped playing inside out. I don't know what we, the fuck we I don't did. Know we stopped what, playing. We just stopped playing. Because against us, this is how y'all swept us. Y'all yeah. threw it in him. You, if you didn't if double, double it, if you yeah, didn't double you or triple, on it was over. And then we did pick and roll, but we was doing some Jameer other had stuff. 18 points Jameer in the first was, three games. Yes. In the first quarter. Yes. Smoking. And Hello. then Stan was like, no, knew everything. And so then we went to him and was like, yo, like, bro, what? like, why are you doing After this? After we were down 0-2. We went to yeah, him. and then we... Then we got down 0-3, didn't we? No, we was down 0-2. I think we, we might have got been down 0-3, then we won two in a row, then they beat us in game six. Yes, that's what happened. And I think that was one of the games where I accidentally elbowed Big Baby. Yeah. And he uh, fell out. <laughs> <laughs> Our pad, I ain't mean to do it, but I just... He knocked him out, actually. You had, to, you had to hit him hard, though. That's a big dude, bro. <laughs> it was crazy. I was like, damn, that's my dog, too. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's sad about it right now. I, I am. 12 years ago. I am. Because 
I don't know. I think that's probably a mis misconception too with mm -hmm. guys that I play with, you know, I played against like when we on the court, like I'm just crazy. I might elbow you or hit mm -hmm. you and be like, fuck you. But then off the court, it's like you my dog, but people might take how I am on the court, you know, crazy. So just a lot of that stuff be crazy. So when you ask, did they blow the trade request out of proportion? But once it kind of starts materializing into something, uh, were there any other teams or were you focused, you wanted to go come here? To L.A.? Mm-hmm. The crazy part about it, I never wanted to go to L.A. Really? Wow. Never. Mm. And I didn't want to go to L.A. because I felt like people was going to compare me to Shaq. And I was trying to follow in Shaq's footsteps, mm -hmm. start with the magic, go to L.A. and be in Hollywood. And I wanted to go to L.A. to do movies and all that. Which is not a bad thing. It's not. But I just didn't want people thinking that, really that I was trying to do But it wasn't who he was, that. neither. But, but yeah. then again, see, that's the, that's the fucked up part, okay? This is, see, this is the fucked up part. You expect me just to come out here and play basketball because that's what you want me to do. Mm -hmm. But basketball is going to end. So don't yes. be mad at me because I'm doing other shit. So that's, yes. the, that's what the, the, but the that's uh, what I don't give a fuck back then. Kick But in. that's what happened back then when I was playing. It was like I'm focused on trying to do movies and all this other stuff. And it's like I'm not focused on basketball. And it was unfair because now everybody's like they doing fuck multiple yeah, I can things. Do it all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm trying to that's do everything. Saying. And I'm Kiss saying back ass. then like, yo, I can do it all too. Like yeah. why can I do movies while I'm in L.A.? And... I, I done practice basketball for half the damn day. I can't go shoot a movie or do a couple hours of this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it just became so much. So I wanted to go to Brooklyn. That's mm -hmm. where I wanted to go. Who was there at the time? Um, I think uh, it was Darren Williams. Uh, Prokhorov had just got there. Joe Johnson. Was Joe there yet? I think Joe was there. Mm -hmm. And um, they were, I actually saw the plans of the new facility, the arena that they was building, and everything. So I was like, really about to go to Brooklyn. And that's why I asked to get out of the, uh, the go from the Magic because I wanted to go to Brooklyn. Mm. And I told the Magic that I didn't want to go to L.A. Mm -hmm. So they sent me to L.A. on purpose because mm. I asked to go to Brooklyn. Right. But I feel like this is where everything changed for you because mm -hmm. obviously the back, the back surgery happens. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a serious... I mean, any, any back surgery is serious, but it was a serious back surgery. And I actually remember talking to you before that season, like, bro, make sure you're ready, bro. What was it the competitor in you that just wanted to get out there and show the world what you had? Because, like, to me, that's where everything changed. You were the most, or if not one of the most dominant players that the game has ever seen in your heyday run in Orlando. And then you came to the Lakers, and I could tell the media, I was like, he can't even really jump. Like, Dwight is someone that's at the top of the backboard catching shit. Like, you weren't really moving like mm -hmm. that. So, as a, as a friend and a fan, I'm like, damn, he's not healthy. Why is he doing this? And then I didn't know you tore your labrum, but. You went through a lot, but specifically coming back fast from that back surgery, what was your thinking behind that? I was, I just wanted to, first I feel like how I departed Orlando, how they made that whole situation happen, it really just put a fire in me to train. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be a year of training, but I came back in four months. So I was like, nah, I'm finna get back mm -hmm. to it. So I'm double time, I'm training three times a day. Um, all types of crazy diets. My, my body fat was down to like 3%. So it was like, I'm doing everything perfect, but I still wasn't ready to play. And then I ended up tearing my labrum, which was super bad, but just the back for people to understand, like they took that much out of my disc mm. in my back. The largest herniation that the doctor has ever seen. And he's one of the best doctors in LA and everybody who's played basketball, who's had back surgeries or anything dealing with their back, they have seen him and his, Dr. Watkins, and his son. And he hasn't son. seen nothing like it. He ain't seen nothing like it. And before I was about to have surgery, the, doc, the doctor in Orlando actually told me I was never going to play again. Oh, if you, if you had the surgery? No, if I didn't have the really? surgery. Really? Shit. He had already said, see, people don't know all this mm -hmm. happened in Orlando. This is why I'm like, I got to go. I hurt my back, and Stan is asking me to practice more, and my back is fucked up. Why would I stay in a place where a team is, don't give two shits about me? Like, mm -hmm. my back is messed up. I'm telling this man, yo, Stan, I can't even walk. Can you do one more play? Can you run this? Stan, <laughs> this shit is fucked up. Come on, Dwight. Just get out. 
Ping so, yeah, so I'm like, come on, man, this ain't cool. Right. But my back was really, really, really messed up to the point where I couldn't do a calf raise. I couldn't lift my foot up. I had no more, nothing in my left leg. And literally the doctor said to me, Dwight, your career is done. So for me to come back in four months, to show you how hard I had to work mm -hmm. just to get my calf, to get the nerve get back. The firing. Firing. It took a month and a half to do that by itself. So after I had the surgery, I had a, I'm walking with a walker mm. around the, the, host, the hospital. The first couple, actually the first couple weeks, I couldn't walk but from probably this wall to that wall right there. That's how far I could walk from here to there and back. First time I went to the gym, I could only go and shoot 10 shots and I couldn't even jump. So I could only stand and do like this 10 times. And then, shit, any little muscle, I couldn't even, I couldn't even fucking fart. If I farted, that shit could come out and fuck my whole back up again. God damn. So the shit was some real ass shit. People right. don't understand how serious that surgery was that I had and what was already going on in my back. If he would have moved whatever utensil he was using a centimeter over to the left or to the right, I could have went paralyzed. Mm. So all that shit was dead serious. So for me to come back like that. So it was supposed to be a year recovery. You came back in four months. I came back in four months and I played and I averaged 22 and damn near 13 12, yeah. in the second half of the season. Yeah. And I was an all-star, and I was led the league in rebounds, and I was second in blocks. And people in L.A. were saying I had a bad season. That was the reason why L.A. lost. How? <laughs> How? Make it make sense. 22 and 12 or 13. And two blocks. And two blocks. It don't make sense. It's just the media and people saying this is what happened. This is the white did this. Him and Kobe got issues. Me and Kobe had issues because, hell, he older than me. I'm young. It's, you got two alpha males. Mm -hmm. I'm a young one, he an old one. He want his way, and I'm shit. I'm happy-go-lucky, and I want my way, but in a happy way. I'm having fun. Like, shit, nigga, give me the ball. I'm going to go dunk on this nigga. But we just didn't have a chance to really build it. build it like we wanted to, you know what I'm saying? And it wasn't meant to happen. You know, looking back on it, I wish it happened, but it wasn't meant to Speak happen. To the relationship with him, uh, you know, I got a chance to play with him and know his mindset and know how mm -hmm. he moves. But then got a chance to play with you and know how you're serious, but you can smile and laugh. Yeah, and he's not like that at all. Yeah, yeah. So I, talk to I, us about that. And 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 was there ever an understanding, or what was it like working with him? Because you only got a year with him. I don't think it was the the understanding that we could have that we could with and time. we should have. Yeah, with time. Because there was so many expectations, and I'm going through my own shit with trying to recover from this back surgery and then tearing my labrum. And it's like, man, how do I deal with somebody that I grew up watching as a child? But now we teammates. We just played each other in the finals. Right, literally. So, like, we got this rivalry. Like, I want to beat his ass, but now we teammates. So it's like, shit, I can't do that no more. Uh... But it's Kobe Bryant, you know what I'm saying? He dunked on me. I want to get his ass back. Ooh, he dunked so, on you tough, bro. Shit, I forgot about that. You really had to do all that? Yeah, because that was a, that was that was but one for of them real? ones. That was one of them ones. But for real? You didn't got other people. <laughs> but for real? But that was one of them ones. <laughs> like the whole time you was over here laid back. Yeah, you know. You did. Oh, but yeah, he dunked on you <laughs> yeah. and shit. That was hey, that was one of them ones. And hey, you didn't pay people back a hundred times worse, but that was one of them ones, bro. He did. I, I see it now. <laughs> <laughs> he dunked the shit out of my ass, but I was young. I, really, I was. What happened was, I didn't think he was going to dunk because I didn't know he was. I didn't know. It was that really, your rookie year or second year? It was my rookie year, so uh -huh. I thought he was going to come over and do like a pull up on so the was, glass. So that was something. eight? That was yep. eight, Kobe. Yeah, so you, eight was dunking everything. I didn't know. Oh, okay. Until yeah. after. He found out. I yeah. found out. Yeah, eight was dunking <laughs> so, everything. He split. It was Pat Garrett and Deshaun mm -hmm. Stevens. He split the pick and roll, and I jump over and come through like that, like I was going. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. <laughs> and so then I closed my eyes too. <laughs> <laughs> 
And all I heard was boom and oh! <laughs> I said, oh shit, this nigga throw no way. <laughs> so then, uh, Brian Grant, uh, he said, welcome to the league, young fella. I said, oh shit, man, this nigga Kobe got me. And then right after that, my homeboy, it was my birthday, so he made a cake with Kobe dunking on me. <laughs> That's hard. Everywhere I was at, I could see the picture of Kobe dunking on me. And it was like, me and Kobe always, this is some bullshit. We always been connected after that. <laughs> Every picture I done seen, I'm in the background. <laughs> like, fuck you, Kobe. You done dunked on my ass. Now I'm in all yeah. your pictures in the back. Like, uh. but yeah, man, rest in peace, man. Yeah, absolutely. That, we had some great times, man, uh, even when we was teammates. Talk to us um, about some of the cool times, because it wasn't always, he's not like that, and you're not nah, like that. No, nah. so there was definitely, I know there was, I wasn't there, but I know you guys had some good times. I used to just always mess with him how, before the game, when they introduced him, how he would try to chew gum, but it was no gum in his mouth. <laughs> but he was acting like he had gum, like how Michael Jordan would come out. So I'm like, yo, are you trying to act like Jordan? No, def no question. He no gum in it. his mouth, and he just sitting on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> yo, do I, you ready to play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, so, so tonight, you know, you know. I'm like, yo, this nigga Kobe's crazy, but then <laughs> MJ off the court, we had some times together in Vegas where, you know, we had some parties and we just chilling and it's just, you see Kobe in a different, different light, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And we just talking and kicking the shit, you know? And I remember going to his house one time and he liked uh, oh, that movie uh, Pitch Perfect. And so I'm like, he like, yo, you, you seen that movie Pitch Perfect? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I like that movie. He like, yeah, I like it too. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. You don't like no Pitch Perfect. I'm like, ain't no way. I'm thinking you watch all crazy ass type movies killing people. But you like Pitch Perfect? He like, y'all just watching that shit last night, bro. It's one of my favorite movies. Did y'all like, just become best friends? Did we just become best friends? It was crazy. Like, you know, just as a kid watching Kobe play and then coming out of high school, Kobe dunking on you. Then you're in the Olympics with Kobe. Mm. And then you on Kobe's team, and then y'all arguing with each other, and all that is still even a yeah, dream. Yeah. Just like right. I don't care what people say, like me and Kobe connected. I got hella. I look back at all the pictures I got of him, and mm. just me and him together, just talking all the shit that done happened between me and him, like the personal stories that I ain't gonna say on camera. Mm -hmm. Like all the, all that is like I can see that. So when people say. Oh, Kobe ain't fuck with you, or this happened. I just laugh, like, right. you know, people don't really know. And then only knew. we played together. We didn't work out. Um, but that happens, you know. It wasn't meant for us to win together like that. But I get, I, I got a chance to see him in so many, it's like different eras of Kobe, like my high school era playing against, seeing him play, watching him in the Olympics together, playing against him on the same team and then watching him be a dad and training all the, the different women, Candace Parker and all that. So, you know, just seeing all that. And then when he passed, man, it really, it really broke me down. Like, you know, I'll never forget how it all happened. We just played in Philly the night before. Bron had broke his record, uh, some, the scoring record or whatever. So I remember just sitting down, thinking about, you know, Kobe scoring all them points and then, then LeBron coming up and scoring all these points. And I was like, you know what? It's always good to tell people why they're alive, mm. you know, how you appreciate them and stuff like that. So I sat up there on the bench and I was like, you know what? I'm going to tell LeBron, like, that's a great accomplishment, Absolutely. dog. So, I'm proud of you. I've been playing against you since we was 15. Mm. So I went over there and told him that. Went back to the room and we started talking about Kobe and how many points he scored and how he dunked on me and all this stuff. And then we get on the plane and we flying back and my phone is blowing up. And everybody's asleep. So I wake up and I look and it said, Kobe died. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. And so I'm looking around, everybody knocked out. I'm like, this can't be real. 
So I go on Instagram and I just see a whole bunch of messages. Kobe died. And then I go wake up Boogie. And I'm like, yo, look at this. He's like, yo, what the fuck? So I wake up AD and LeBron. I start waking up like, yo, bro, Kobe died. And so I'm like, yo, this can't be for real. Go to the back. Everybody else start waking him up. Just start crying. I go to the bathroom and I'm just start crying for like 20 minutes in the bathroom. I'm like, I can't believe it. Then I start thinking about his daughters. Like, dang, they ain't gonna have no father. Then one of his daughters died. I just kept thinking about that. And then we got off the plane and shit, it was just so hard after that to even just mm-hmm. fathom the whole situation. Then this man was my teammate, you know what I'm saying? So it was different for a lot of people. Like, man, we grew up watching this person, but. I done actually been on a plane with this man, you know what I'm saying? We done practice together, we kick the shit with each other. Down there about to go blows with each other, you know what I'm saying? So now it's like you find out this person ain't there no more. So yeah, it was mm-hmm. it was really it really hurt. Mm-hmm. Kind of piggybacking off that, you were one of the rare people that got a chance to play with Kobe, play against him in the finals, play with him, play with LeBron, win with LeBron. Not to compare them to, but are there any? What are, what are some of the similarities or contrast? Like, I just think they're two different. They're two. It's it's two different. They're two different people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Kobe's. I always felt like Kobe was like Batman. You know what I'm saying? Like he, just this, he by himself. The Dark Knight. The, yeah, he. That's Kobe, mm-hmm. and then, you know, LeBron's like Captain America. <laughs> For real, real you know, shit. That's like that's uh-huh. like that's like LeBron. So LeBron is always he want everybody to be around. You know what I'm saying? He want to have fun. He want to dance before the games and put on his music. And Kobe just locked in. He don't say nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, right, he got the basketball and he dribbling the heavy ball before the whole the game. So uh, as far as skills, I think I think Kobe like is the most skilled out of all the players as far as pure skill, yeah. shooting, being able to, you, you, what you, you know? I'm oh, shit, I'm, you, it's not even close to me. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm just thinking about everything. <laughs> shit, it's not like, even he, close to me. Just thinking about it, like, he can do all that. Like, everything Jordan did, I felt like he just multiplied it. He like, perfected mm-hmm. that shit. Yeah, like, and people mad at him for doing it. Like, why? man, why? Like, <laughs> right. You don't never try to break the wheel. You you see what works, and then you use that mm-hmm. and make it work for you. So mm-hmm. that's what Kobe did, and he did it with the best player ever. Like, he mm-hmm. did everything he did and made it better. And, you know, even watching him practice, like, some things that he was doing, I was like, why is he doing it? Like, one day I saw him getting his fingers stretched. I'm like, why is he getting his fingers stretched? I just saw the lady doing this for a whole... Like, Al, when I guess it was when he shot his jump shot. So it'll be smooth every time if, when he... So it's just, like, little things like that. Like, where did he learn that from? It was just crazy to see. But then LeBron, he just got the whole package. He can pass. He can post up. He's big. He's like Magic Johnson on steroids. He should be the logo. Who? LeBron. He's the you best all-around be player we've ever seen. Ooh. All around? I don't think we've seen anybody the logo. All, better all around. He said LeBron should be the logo. Wow. I'm not mad at that at all. If you're talking about basketball, people tell kids today, yeah, Michael Jordan is the best, but if I had to tell you to look at one player, go look at LeBron James. Everybody's telling their kid that because he does everything right on and off the court. Mm-hmm. You, he, you can't miss with LeBron. So what about Steph? He's not 6'8", 260. That can yeah. do it all. That's broke all the records. Yeah. He's not 6'8", six, And, yeah, six, they both be getting a beat off. Steph going to get that beat, too. But Steph, I don't know. It's just that man, Steph, like, but a lot of kids, he, Steph changed the game. Yeah, no the question. New, the newer generation. No question. Steph changed the game. Very few people did that. Yeah, so, like, shoot, we going to have LeBron and Steph on that? Yeah, I'm just, I, you know, I'm just like, for what, what Steph is unbelievable. But the total aspect of a basketball player and what you're supposed to do as a basketball player and how your mm-hmm. career's career's supposed to look when you finish, yeah, <laughs> it's LeBron James, bro. That's that there. That's that there. That man. Yeah. The king. 
I ain't mad at that. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier uh, not wanting to go to the Lakers because of the Shaq comparison. And you already started in Orlando, and he jumped to the Lakers, and you weren't trying to do that, and it ended up happening. Um, <clears throat> you and him kind of had a friendly, then I felt like he kind of did some personal and kind of took it a little bit more serious. And again, knowing you, fun, energetic kind of person, where is that at? What did you think when you first started hearing, like, damn, does Shaq not like me? Or like, what, yeah, what did I you think? Yeah, I thought it was crazy. And I was thinking he want to fight or something. Like, Because <laughs> every time it was like something on TV and somebody would say something, no, I don't think so. It's, no. no. The Lakers got five Hall of Famers. No, 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 no. Only four. It's not one. No, don't put him in there. No, don't do that. No. So I'm like, damn, like every time he says something about Dwight, and for me, like, you know, I like to do voices. So I yeah, do everybody yeah, voices yeah. in their mama. It don't matter who it is. It ain't me doing it because I'm I dislike you. It's just mm -hmm. me trying to make everybody yeah, laugh. Yeah. So if he took it that way, like he tripping, but like, I don't know why he was like that. I never had no issues with Shaq. I never wanted to be like Shaq, but I enjoy watching Shaq do what he do. I think he's the most dominant player to ever mm -hmm. play. Like there's no player as dominant as Shaq, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, this nigga was going crazy. I remember in 11th grade watching him play against the Kembe Mutombo in the finals. Like, catching every time, elbow to the chest, turn around, dunk on him every time. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> right. So I'm like, why is he hating on me? Like, if anything, he should be happy that somebody is trying to follow in their footsteps. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember this summer as a young kid who said they wanted to be just like me. And I took that as saying like, man, thank you, man. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you for wanting to be like me, but I want you to be greater. So you know what? I'll train you. So I started training this kid this summer. And every day I'm just reminding him, hey, remember what you said? Mm -hmm. You want to be like Dwight Howard? Well, shit, I did more than this, but mm -hmm. this, is what it, this is what it takes. So like, I don't know why he had that against me. I reached out to try to work out with him, do business, whatever it may be. Because I ain't got no bad blood with Shaq, but it just seemed like it's always something between me and him. And he Still? always, even now, the stuff I was just saying about the Hall of Fame shit, mm -hmm. that happened this season. Mm -hmm. I can't watch the Lakers. I bet he watched Lakers game this year because <laughs> I ain't on the team. Hey, but you know what? Can't nobody, can't nobody. Shaq or nobody else in their right mind, if you know anything about basketball, it's not even a question if you're a Hall of Fame. I agree, but come on, like, why would it, out of all people, yeah, him, like, one, he a center, and, like, really ain't that too many where they talk about all us anyway. Mm -hmm. So why put one of them down, you know what I'm saying? Like, my my light ain't gonna dim your light. Nah, you right. should kill O'Neal. Like, why Always you worrying about be, me? Right. Mm -hmm. I got my own lane, you know what I'm saying? I ain't worrying about what you doing in that aspect. And then now, I felt like, cause I'm not a person that get on TV and talk bad about other people. I felt like looking at him doing it is like, he not understanding. People got family and they got friends and they got people that's watching. You gotta watch what you say about certain certain people or certain things on TV or whatever because they got people watching. He got kids watching, you know what I'm saying? I got my kids watching. Mm -hmm. They don't need to have no issues with each other because their dads might seem like they hate each other. Like, mm -hmm. for what? Like, it's too much going on around the world for us to be hating about who the best basketball big man ever. Like, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. just stupid to me. Right. I mean, we can have barbershop barbecue talk about it, barbe barbershop talk. But I, don't know, I guess we got to get into the little UFC thing and fight it out. <laughs> I don't want to see that. I, I just plan. I, I ain't going to do that. We look like, uh, I don't see what's that. the two fighters from back in the day that got uh, Dada, Dada 3000 and uh, oh, they knocked Kimbo out. Slice when they got in there and fought. <laughs> they, took, they, they look like two big seals in there fighting. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't even throw no punches. <laughs> they were so tired. That's what me and Shaq a little like in there. <gasps> Come here, Dwight. I'm going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I would rather see? Uh, than them fight. 
I would rather see y'all do have, a comedy battle. Yes. We, yeah, that'd be funny we'll roast, as shit. Roasting each we other. We should roast each other. That'd be funny. Hell that'd yeah, be funny, I got dog. some jokes for his that'd big be, ugly ass. Be, <laughs> oh my God. That'd be hilarious. I would go dog. ham on him. I've been waiting for some shit like that. Tell him right now, oh, you, want, you, want, you want to hey, roast though. Hey, hey, Shaq, me and you, let's roast each other, brother. Can you dig it? Huh? <laughs> Y'all <are> crazy. <laughs> oh shit. Oh my god. Uh, hey, you know he gonna love it. Oh, he, he gonna, gonna really love wanna it. fight. Nah, 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 where he at now? Nah, where he at? Nah. I know he did. I know. I Stack, you put him on to it. Huh, where? Where's Charles? <laughs> he Barkley? gonna love it, dog. He gonna love it. <laughs> oh shit. Um fast forwarding your ring season. The world is seems like it's falling apart. They stick you guys in the bubble. Um, Kobe passes in that January. Mm -hmm. um, talk to us just about all that. I mean, it seemed like it, it, it had to happen because of Kobe's passing. Uh, what, yeah. what, what was the mental strain that season? Obviously, you lost him. The season gets suspended for a little bit. Then they put you guys in the bubble, isolated from the rest of the world. What was that experience like? <clears throat> oh, man. That... That was really hard for me because I lost my my son's mom died that mm -hmm. summer. Rest in peace. Yeah. Um, Condolences, man. So, thank you. Uh, she died right before the bubble happened, so it was just a hard situation to deal with because my son was six at the time, and it was like everything was hitting. Kobe had passed away. The season was going pretty good and then we had this pandemic that the whole world had you know it was just crazy how it all happened we're sitting at home you know i'm talking to my kids moms about everyone coming down for the pandemic so we could see our kids and just be together during that time and as i was getting ready to uh contact her about coming down her mom calls me and tells me that she dies so I'm like, damn, this is crazy. Then I had to go down to the bubble and leave my son for three months. Mm -hmm. um, and he didn't have nobody else. So in my mind, this was, it was just, I had to find a way to keep it from going crazy without seeing him. So it just made me want to work out harder. I got in the gym and I was there more. And I didn't want to do nothing but win that championship for him. I wanted him to just see that. I felt like that was gonna give him a, enough inspiration to kind of not, I would say, put that moment, not put it away, but kind of at least make him feel good. Cause yeah, that whole, yeah, yeah, cause that whole summer he was just asking me like, why do people die? Like, mm. you know, why does my mom have to leave me? And I'm, all these questions he asked me, I'm like, man, I, I really can't answer, I don't, I don't know. And then like for me, that was the first time I actually had a, child in my house full time because the rest of my kids live with their moms. Mm -hmm. So it was just all these new things happening. Mm, daddy you know, on the fly. Yeah, yeah. it was mm -hmm. just crazy. But I'm glad that um, he's in a much better space now mentally. Um, and I am too uh, because of that. It's made both of us stronger. Mm -hmm. But obviously you endured more than most but still had to play Mm -hmm. In the bubble, like, yeah. what was what was the bubble like? Was it cool? It was Did you crazy. get tired of seeing motherfuckers every day? Like, what was the bubble like? At first, we was getting the worst food in our lives. Like, they was feeding <laughs> us like frozen, like kids' cuisine meals, like type meals. They just put it under the heater. So I was like, man, they got to do better with the food. Uh, we couldn't get really no room service, so <clears throat> we was stuck with this for like a, a couple weeks. We couldn't leave the hotel. We couldn't explore nothing at Disney World, so we just stuck there at this hotel. Everybody catching the same fish in the lake, because it was only a, it's a little lake, and they like, everybody got a fish in this one lake, so you see people catching fish and throwing it back, but Someone they ain't realize it was the lake. same one. By the time we done uh, left the whole bubble, that fish was fat in the mug, you know, everybody <laughs> bait. Uh, so um, just being in there, in that confined spot, you know, it's just crazy, but in all actuality, 90 days in the bubble really helped change and shape my life mm. because I got a chance to get away from everything and see 
who was right for me, who wasn't right, the people that I needed to have in my corner, the people that no longer needed to go on this journey with me. All those things happened because I was able to get away and see clearly. You know, a lot of times as players, we are in city to city to city. And while this is happening, somebody's at home doing things and we can't really see it. So a lot of times we get distracted. But if you're in the bubble, everything's happening right there. So now I can see what's going on. Now those same people that say they love me and they want this and that and the third, they're not calling, they're not doing mm -hmm. this, that, and that. So I know, okay, they need to go. So I really just learned more about myself and about the people around me, my teammates. And that whole atmosphere was pretty cool. And then the playoffs, that's when I turned up in the bubble. Like we was playing Denver and you was playing your ass off though. It was crazy uh, to me how they you don't come up, but go ahead, man. Yeah, so we playing Denver, and Denver's meal room is across from ours in the hotel. So I'm using this as a mental like way to mess with Jokic the whole time. I'm going in their uh, uh, dinner room, talking to him. You just know, sit down just, at the table with him? Yeah, I just dap him up. And we just played him or something. So I know he's mad. I'm going in there, but it's just like all the mind game. And I'm like, man, this, it was really fun being able to see all of us together like that. But it was, it was, it was good for me. I'm glad that I ended up going, being a part of it. <clears throat> the Redeem Team documentary about to come out. Mm -hmm. Talk about that and any memories, any uh, good stories? Oh, uh, the, the, the story that everybody's been talking about, Kobe uh, running through Powell. I don't know if y'all heard about that. I just remember how crazy that was and the whole experience of playing in the Olympics with all these guys, Kobe, Braun, Melo, D-Wade, Jason Kidd, uh, Chris Paul, Darren Williams, Chris Bosh, Michael Red, all these greats. Man, then we're playing in Beijing and here's Kobe coming for the game like, yo, I'm finna fuck pile up. It's your teammate. Watch. Watch this. I'm going to run through his ass. So he say, Dwight, move out the way. First play of the game. You see it on film. Pal try to set this screen. I just move out the way. Kobe run him over. Boom! And just look over and walk away. Set the song. Yo, this man is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he ran this you man over like, it. man, he ran him smooth over, didn't care if he got thrown out the game or not. But he set the tone after that. And you know what I'm saying? It was just crazy being in the Olympics and then watching that whole, that, that movie, just going back and- Have you seen it yet? I, I just seen it for the first time the other day, and mm. I'm like, man, people gonna really enjoy it. The stories about, you know, Kobe, uh, LeBron, D Wade, um, just the atmosphere of being in China. Like, you guys will get a chance to see how it was for us trying to even go down the street with Kobe. You know how crazy it was and stuff like that. So uh, it's gonna be really good. That team versus the dream team. You know, I got to say, we going to win. You but, you know, they got some great players, too. I think it would be a great matchup. Kobe versus MJ. Um, but then you got LeBron. Who going to play? Who going to check LeBron? Scotty? Scotty. Going to check LeBron? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Back then, when we was young? Oh, my God. That's what I was touching the top of the backboard. We blocking everything. Ain't nobody coming in Man, the paint. Man, I got a chance to play with a lot of great players. I tell you, bro, just to uh, just hats off to you. Like I never felt more comfortable, like getting all the way in somebody's chest, knowing you was behind me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like Dwight was someone's gonna block the shot, or he'll foul the shit out of you. Yeah, either and one. And I was gonna foul you too. So it's just yeah. like, okay, we definitely have a little mental thing here. But it was that's what kind of bothers me though, is because. You've taken so much. To me, you were on pace to be one of the greatest. You explained what happened with the back and everything. Obviously, that derailed you from kind of continuing to climb, but you still mm -hmm. know about first belt Hall of Famer. But to me, you were someone who was so great, but then I think how fast people forget 
obviously, we live in a moment of what have you done for me lately, but how fucking great you were in that run, man. Three-time defensive player of the year, back-to-back -back like that. I should have had four. See? And the only reason they didn't give it to me is because I asked for a trade. Mm. How crazy is that? Mm. I was first team all defense that year. The person who won who was won that year? third team all defense. Who won it that make year? Make it make sense. Who, who won it that year? Tyson Chandler. I led the team. I led the league in defensive rebounds and total rebounds and blocks. And he got the award. And they only gave it to him because I asked for a trade and all the media the was going that? around. It was the year I asked for the trade. So it was 11 or 12, right? Yeah, 12. yeah. 12. 12. Yeah, he was in Dallas? He was in New York. New York, Knicks. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. He was mm. in New York. And he was third mm. team all defense. Yeah, nobody on that team should ever win an award. It's <laughs> no way you be third team all defense and win the defensive player of the year no, award. It don't right. make sense. So that's why I was they like, man. They got to go just... back and look at the tape. How that Go makes back sense. and look at the tape. That's crazy. I, I just I just saw they uh, they team pictures uh, um, for the Knicks with with um, the new seat this with year. Barrett Brunson and uh, Rant and uh, was it Randall? <laughs> yeah. Randall. And as much as I love Barrett, man, you should have seen that picture. You just that shit just looked like they finna lose. It don't even like the picture, the, the picture don't even look like they finna get no dubs. I'm, I'm I just can't saying say that. it, it, it scrolled know. down my <laughs> IG and I, I just it. so happened to see it. I'm like. That, that photo should be like, said the wife's hey, name. Send, hey, send all comments and complaints to this nigga. All right, say his name. Now, no. Y'all know y'all ain't winning shit. NBA champ, eight time All Star, eight time All NBA, three time Defensive Player of the Year, should have been four. The list goes on. You were somehow left on the top, off the top 75 list. We went crazy, too. How much did that bother you? Man, it. It bothered me so much. I was like, man, I don't even want to play basketball. Mm. Yeah, and I, was, I really like just. I mean, hell, no, I, I really was just all like, NBA? understandable, bro. I was like, man, fuck it. I don't even really want to play because it's like after all this work I done put in and did, right. the disrespect is already too much. Like, I'm the one thing that I'm thinking about is I help win a help a team win a championship. Like, and I'm and I'm not cocky at all, but I know if I didn't play against Denver and I wasn't on that team in the bubble, we would not have won the championship. And I'm not being cocky. I'm not that type of person you at all. For that team. So I know that my presence was felt in that series. But to not get a contract after that, then to go to another team and get another minimum contract, and then the team that you won the championship with won't even want to sign you to a multi. I'm like, man, this is disrespectful. And then look on TV and not on the top 75. When I knew, I knew I wasn't going to be on it when the list got down to 10 people. And I was like, yeah. And you saw all the people that and wasn't I on it? And I saw the people that wasn't on it. I said, you know what? They finna, they finna do me dirty. I already know it. They finna do me dirty. So when it happened, I was like, man, I don't even want to play. This shit ain't even cool no more. Like. For real, like, and I just started naming players that was on there, and there's no disrespect to them in their careers. Don't and worry, I hate I that I did that. Say the name. I anybody disrespect. else can do it, but I just kept, I was thinking in my head, like, there's no you way that this me. person could even stand on the court with me. Like, this shit just blew my mind. But then I was like, you know what? I know what I done did in my career. I know who I am. And you got the respect from your peers, though. Fuck it. I'm not finna let that shit stop you. You know the motherfuckers who vote for that shit? Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> That's one. <laughs> hey, but he you, was on the list. But you, but, but he you know, said, no, I'm not getting a motherfucker on this 75. You know, you know the majority of the motherfuckers that vote for that shit, though? That never played basketball. Man, don't even know how to put air on the basketball. You're right. You're right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that shit does not matter, bro. And then again, you. Kyrie, Vince, like that's how you yeah, know it's bullshit. That don't even make sense. T Mac, T Mac, like yeah. come on, like bro, it was it was some people that you never seen in your life and never even known they played basketball on their list. All right, so I just gotta name one person name. 
Was it Danny Shays? Dolph Shays. Dolph Shays. Who the fuck? no way he was I'm that good. Him. I'm him. <laughs> There's no I'm way he was. Him. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to go Dolph back Shays. to being. No, no. Let's no talk way. about this shit. Go ahead, Stack. I'm, tell hey, me. Hey, I would have bust his ass. <laughs> for real. <laughs> Fucking Dolph Shays. Are you kidding me? Who so is that? one Dolph we like. Yeah, and that's yeah. young Dolph. Rest, Rest in peace, Flip. Rest in peace. Who is Dolph? No, who is he? What does he look like? What team is he on? What was his number? Anybody know? Right. Thank you. We know he was top 75. <laughs> no, nah, he wasn't. They just put his ass in there. He would have got cooked. Like, hey, like Adrian Bronner. I would, he would have got cooked. Oh, man. Straight up. Hey, go back to the uh, the Houston thing. It's, a whole, it's, it's some other motherfuckers on there, too. I just can't think right now. But that was that one. That was one name. It's, that's, but it's some other motherfuckers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a whole bunch of you sorry motherfuckers that don't belong on that motherfuckers top 75 list. I'm going to keep it fun because I'm a bass. I played the game, and I love the game. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of y'all that's on there that should not be on there, bro, especially before this man, uh, Vince Carter and Kyrie Irving. I'm sorry. And Clay. That Thompson. shit trash. Clay. And Clay. That, that list trash. Clay, but I'm glad Clay did what he did. I'm glad that he was afforded the opportunity to go show people why he deserved to be on the top 75. Mm -hmm. So that was good about his situation is that he got a chance. Even after they didn't put him on there, he had a knee surgery that stopped him. He was able to get back. And then he killed it in the uh, mm -hmm. he killed it in the playoffs, man. Three years in Houston, you get a chance to play with James Harden, who's who who's ascending to another level at that time. What was that experience like? You got a chance to play with Kobe, you played with Braun, but thinking back playing with James in that moment, he was I mean, they had to change the rules for this motherfucker. What was it like playing with James <laughs> in Houston? I mean, we used to call James uh, Fred Flintstone. We used to do the, the, the little step backs and the little tippy toes. So we used to call him Fred Flintstone. And I just remember watching him develop that step back and the side step and all those moves every day of practice to where now he's perfected it. And uh, he was the reason why I decided to go to Houston. You know what I'm saying? Um, Playing with Kobe, uh, I feel like it didn't work out like I wanted, but I felt like it was a great situation in, in Houston. You were you um, to feel like yourself then, getting to Houston? I wanted, when I got to Houston, I felt like I had got my strength back. I felt like I was a lot better uh, mentally and physically. And then I'm looking at a young James Harden who I'm saying, man, this man got a chance to be one of the best shooting guards. He just Ever. need a... He need like a a running mate. He needs somebody to to play off of him. So I'm thinking that that's what me and him was gonna be. Um, the first year was okay. Then we got to the to the finals, the Western Conference Finals one year, and just playing with him, it was just crazy. Just watching his development. Um, like I said, the step backs, the threes, the the Euro steps, all that stuff. Just watching him, just take that. What level kind of worker is he? Man, he worked on that every day, mm. especially that three ball. That's why he shoots so good, man. It was just, it's just effortless for him. Um, Do you believe he lost 100 pounds? A cap. Yeah, I think it was a joke. Wasn't cap. It? Nah. Wasn't he, it a nah. Joke? I don't think he lost 100 pounds. There's no way he could have. There's no way he could have. Cap. There's no way he could have lost 100 pounds because yeah. there's no way he was 300 pounds. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. No, I think it was he a wasn't joke. that big, for one. And I think he probably did lose some weight. Uh, but I think the weight was kind of good for him and how he played. Um, getting to the basket, being able to post up, I always thought that some of the things that uh, Kobe was doing, he could have used in his game. Mm -hmm. So going there, I wanted to kind of help him with that. Like uh, Kobe's uh, post post work, I felt like if he de really developed that, James was strong. If he, if he can do that, if he yeah. can add that to the game, that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. I think just he getting in that post. Anybody. Uh, Cause that's what Jordan did. He slowed it down and started going to the post. He didn't just mm -hmm. he didn't shoot a lot of threes. But then Kobe started doing that too. Or you know you played against Kobe a lot. Both of y'all. Mm -hmm. He got to his spot and just shot over him. And I'm like James with the guards he'll be playing against. Mm, too little. He's strong enough to where he can get to his spot. And then they got Embiid. So what you gonna do? Pick you got to pick your poison. Mm -hmm. So I think hopefully now he really put it all together and they have a good run. State of Big Ben right now, it's it, it's it for a second it looked like it might have almost faded out of the NBA. Mm -hmm. Um the emergence of Joker and Embiid. 
um, of late? I, I think it's you. different. I think when I came into the league, they weren't allowing big men to do what they're doing mm -hmm. now. No, weren't allowed to. Um, Greek Freak forced them. No, I, it's after him. Greek Freak was different from. Well, he's, yeah. about, he's talking about the state today, though. It, it, it no, you're talking about he, like center, center big. Yeah, though. he yeah. different. Like, so he's not considered a center no, big. No, he not nah. because he never played the center. He always played like the. They six. tried that with Tim Duncan. Well, what you mean, like? But I'm saying, like, yeah, the, they did. I used to have to be in the post all the time. Period. All the time, I never only, had a chance to stand out on a perimeter. Only time and you do get to some kind of set of screen. That's mm -hmm. it. But my it? job, like, Stan never wanted me to shoot a jump shot. Even if I shot a jump shot, he would go tell Pat. Hey, tell Dwight to not work on jump shots. Why? I just hook shots, dunk, and get out of here. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. <you> fuck. <laughs> and so, like. I'm working on jump shots, but Stan's like, no, fuck that. Hook shots, dunks, get in the post. We're going to turn five your ass, mm -hmm. deep duck ins, and go right over the top. But now it's not like that. They want space. You know what I'm saying? So even with how big supposed to play now, we used to, we used to be looking for bodies to go five back in the day. Like, if I'm running down the court, I'm looking to hit you if I'm running. To see you. To you, see you. But you now it's like, no. Get out the way. No space. Get wide. Mm -hmm. Trail to play. Catch it and get into an action. Do something different. You know what I'm saying? You so, could have gotten your bag a little more in this era? What's crazy about it, I, I was in my, a bag before I got to the league. Super bag. And when I got to the league, it was like, no Turned more. No more of this. We don't want you to dribble. We don't want you to shoot. Early. We don't want you to do nothing but dunk the ball. It worked out good. I got the most dunks in the history of basketball. Yeah, Perk. But yeah. hell. Now, high school, Perk was getting it off the rim. And he was bringing Whoa. it up the no, court. Perk was nice. In and out, all that. Perk was nice. Uh, Perk, well, I remember playing against Perk um, because uh, LeBron and them came down to Houston, the soldiers, and Perk was on their team. It was LeBron, Perk, um, What's the guy played in Boston from uh, Oakland? Uh, Drew? No. Um, he hurt yeah. himself. He, he hurt himself. Leon, Leon. Leon Poe. Leon he Poe. was on the team. Uh, so Alden was on the team. What age? What age was this? This was when we was 15. It was 15 was playing against LeBron, and they were 16. It's the first time I heard LeBron and them. And it was Kendrick Perkins. That was the one that stood out. Who who stood out the most to you on the other team that, that game? Besides LeBron. Oh, it was LeBron. It was LeBron. I didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Cause like, I mean, I stayed in a bubble for real. Like I was really bubble boy. So when I started playing AAU, I remember my homeboy saying, "Y'all finna go play against LeBron." I was like, "Who the fuck is LeBron?" <laughs> he was like, "You don't know LeBron." I was like, "Bro, who is LeBron, dog? I don't know nobody." He said, bro, that nigga's supposed to be the coldest ever, bro. Already, he ain't even went to the league. Mm. And I'm like, you lying. So we get down to Houston. Uh, Warm-ups come. I'm looking to see who LeBron was. First warm-up line dunk, he do his little signature. Mm -hmm. Dude, whole crowd go crazy. My whole team looking down there. Damn, you see that? I said, that's LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and after that, I knew who LeBron James was. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Burning Man, talk to us about that oh experience. Oh, my God. <laughs> How you hear about that? I mean, I hear about shit. That's the best experience in the world. I think everybody... How many days go. were you out there? I was there for six days. I think everybody in the world needs to experience it. Only just to see that we could all come together in peace mm. and live in the same environment. Where's that at? In the desert. There's 90,000 people Bro, you, there. Hey, you, you just like the I like desert, it. old dehydrated like ass it. motherfucker. <laughs> I'll be drinking <laughs> hella water, man. That nigga like the desert. He just talking about he almost did the other shit in the desert. Now he's back in the desert. What y'all doing to my boy, man? Dehydrated <laughs> ass motherfucker. Dehydrated. Hey, no, no lie, though, for real. Burning Man was amazing, dog. Just to see all these people come together and celebrate life, no arguing, no fighting, mm -hmm. great music, all good vibes. Man, it was just the best time I had. There's no money in there, so you don't pay nothing with cash. Would you Every, barter? If you barter, it's a bartering system. Okay. So 
no matter who, what your title is. Would you barring like your old tights from Orlando and shit? Like no, those? man, get out of here. <laughs> what would you, what you bartering? <laughs> I gave somebody a crystal, but really, since it was my first time, people were just giving me gifts. Oh, uh, really? Okay. And a lot of people were just coming at me, talking to me. Like some people didn't even know who I was from Adam. I remember. So. Uh, one day I was in this this tent uh, getting some fruit and vegetables eating and uh, just vibing out to some music. And this guy came over, he's like, dude, you're a big bag motherfucker, man. I don't know who you are, but fuck, man, I feel your energy. Oh, my God. And I'm like, you straight? He's like, yeah, man, it's just, dude, man, I don't know you, man, but I love you, dude, man. I just want to tell you that, man. And you're a big bad motherfucker, dude. Fuck yeah! No, they just who, gave me a hug. No idea, no clue. No who clue who I was. I'm like, man, this is That's great, dope, man. Right? Just everybody coming together, no matter who you are, no matter what you like, just be yourself. And these people there just accept you as like a, a whole week and a half of just celebrating life in this big old desert. You get to dress how you want to dress. Uh, if you don't want to wear clothes, you ain't got to wear clothes. Mm -hmm. If you do want to wear clothes, it's kind of like Mad Max vibes. Mm -hmm. Y'all seen Mad Max, something like that. And just listen to a whole bunch of good music, eat good. Um, they have like meditation sessions. Um, they have this big burning man in the middle that they burn on the second to last day. And they have this temple where everybody come and they meditate in, they write they write notes to past loved ones and stuff like that. Um, they do ceremonies in there. They do art all around. They have these big art uh, trolleys with lights and stuff. It's people there all ages. The oldest person that we saw there was 98. The mm. youngest person was probably, what, about five, six months. Damn. So it's kids there too. It's mm -hmm. not just adults. Right. When people have heard about it in the past, they think it's just some type of big sex party. And that's what people was telling me. But when I went, I was like, man, there's so much more. And you can see how we can actually come together without fighting, with art, without arguing, and people can drink and have a good time. And 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 in, it, it don't be nothing crazy, you right. know what I'm saying? And just to experience that, it was the best place that I've been, you know? So this summer was wild, man. I started out in India, uh, went to some really cool places out there in India, went to go see the Taj Mahal. I went to this place called Varanasi. I don't know if you guys heard of that. Mm -hmm. But it's this place uh, where uh, they have this fire that's been burning for over 300 years. And that's where they, they burn everyone's body in this fire when they die. And then they put it in this magic river. And every night, everybody in this city come to this one spot and they pray for the whole world. They yeah. pray for peace for the whole world. Mm -hmm. It was just crazy to see that. I went to Egypt, saw the pyramids saw how massive these, have y'all seen the pyramids? Mm -hmm. Not a lot, no. I think people need to travel. Like that's one thing I'm just seeing the world, just these pyramids is so crazy to see in person. But I guess I love the desert, my dehydrated ass. <laughs> <laughs> love the desert, boy. Like, love the desert. Dope. All right, man, coming down to the end, quick hitters, first thing to come to your mind, an all-time starting five, including yourself with guys you played with. Guys, you're not I gonna be on that, dog. So don't even get your hopes up. Go ahead, bro. Damn. Guys, who I play. I'm just with. saying. I just look like you was about to say five. Matt. Nope, not Matt. When, when, when have I ever said Matt? Olympics. Olympics. So like you about to say that. anybody you play with? Period. Oh my God. So okay, I got Kobe, bro. That was me. <laughs> Go ahead. Kobe, bro, and me. Mm. Dang. To get, now you got to get somebody else to make it fast. You got to do that. That's the lot right there. He played for James. Yes, I got to have Vince. Oh, BC. I got to have Vince. And who are we? We need a four man. Sweet Lou. And I was thinking about Sweet Lou. <laughs> Sweet Lou. I was going to say Tony Batiste, but that's just because yeah, that's my that. OG. Yeah, yeah Texas. But Sweet Lou. Sweet Lou, man, but. It's, I had so many great teammates, man. Like, that's one thing about the league, man, playing with so many guys. Like, my teammates, they was like family to me. You know, you played on my mm -hmm. team. We was always together, mm -hmm. always at each always other's house. Big up, big ass house. He yeah. did that on every team, though. He, he uh, brought every team together like Matt, that. Matt, yeah. when we was together, that's all we did. We was 
Always together. Yeah, Dwight, I mean, ain't they Dwight road, though. I had Dwight's yeah. big ass shoes too. I was wearing them. Shit, all the time. We, you cannot separate all of us. Like that was mm -hmm. just, you know how we were. This is my little homie. I be trying to tell people about stories about Jason Williams, Bubs, White White Chocolate. Oh man, remember I, the one where he threw behind the back pass and hit Stan in the stomach when he was talking about Stan? What do you remember that day? And Stan got mad, and kicked him out. Fuck, kicked him out of kicked practice. Kicked him out of practice. And, you got any uh, good Jason Williams stories? I, that one right there when that shit uh, was Stan so... he meant to do it. Did yes. on purpose. Oh yeah, he he just Stan, Stan, out, Stan yeah. went playing. Yeah, he was cussing so, Stan yeah, out. So Stan, yeah, Stan went playing. So he said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go play at the Y." He was going to play at the Y. Why and so Stan was telling like, "Yo, stop doing that." He was like, "I already got my rings, bubs. Go get yours and he fuck it. My, I'm out." He said, "My shit's underneath my sink." And bro, he threw a cross court, not a full court, cross court behind the back pass and hit Stan right in the stomach. And you know, Stan got a big ass belly, so that shit like had a <laughs> had a target on it. Like nigga was the perfect. We used to call him the penguin. <laughs> this shit was crazy. I was like, yo. And Stan was crazy too, but I love Stan. He would do crazy stuff like call me in the office and talk to me with his shoes off and his little feet. He wore like a size seven, like little baby ass feet in between with his little toes. Well, you know, Dwight, um, I need you to rebound more. I'm like, coach, I got what? <laughs> But fucking Stan, yeah, that nigga was crazy. <laughs> Go ahead. Most underrated city or country you've been to? Greatest city or country? Most underrated, underrated. city or country you've been to? Ooh, wee, that's tough. Um, Charlotte, I think it's underrated. I like Charlotte um, mm -hmm. from playing there. Mm -hmm. um, it's really underrated. It's a lot of things you could get into. In Charlotte. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Great. you get all four seasons. Greatest city. The greatest city. Oh, I got to go with Atlanta. Oh, Tell them, cool. shout I'm from Atlanta. Uh, but every city that, you know, I like to travel. So every city that we played in, I really like. I go out and try to find some cool things about it. During the off season, uh, Australia is one of my favorite places. Uh, India. Uh, obviously, Africa, Egypt, after going this summer, like, I suggest, that's mm. one place. Like, Egypt is crazy. Like, the vibe, everybody's out having a great time, the music, riding camels, just sitting in the pyramids. It's unbelievable. Dream Music Festival. Who would open that and who would close it for you? Ooh, we, who would open my Dream Music Festival? Ooh, we. That's tough. Uh, okay. I gotta have, I gotta have Lil Wayne and Drake open it. Mm. Lil Wayne and Drake. Told mm -hmm. you, happy birthday to him. He came and coached your game one time, right? Or was he just there? Yes, that was the us. game we had in, um, in Orlando. In, in, Orlando. in Orlando. Him and Floyd came and coached Yeah, him. that was right. But, uh, okay, we got Drake and we got Lil Wayne started. Then, we're going to have Gunner and mm. Thug. They're mm. going to come Free in and do their thing. In the middle? In the middle, they're going to come in and you do their thing. You going to get them out of jail real quick? Real quick. Okay. Come in and do their little show. Free YSL. All YSL. All of them going to come out. And then we got to have Young Nudie, A-Town guy. All Atlanta got to rap. And we got to close it with The Wizard, man. Mm. Future. Mm. Pluto. Mm. Pluto. Yes, yeah, sir. Got to close it with Future. That's my twin right now. <clears throat> Y'all do look alike, too. No, nah, he just mean they have a lot of babies. Nah, they look alike. Too. <laughs> 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 hey, man. Y'all got to stop, man. Do, 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 do. I got seven. I can't talk, dog. You got seven? Yes. By, by eight baby See, mamas. you the one. And a bonus daughter. You got eight baby mamas? <laughs> no, no, you no. Got another one. No, no, no. <laughs> Top five centers of all time. Dolph Shays. Top, top five <laughs> serves all time. Dolph Shays averaged 18. Okay, that's solid. Again, he averaged 18 again. Yeah, we had what, 19 for a career? 19K for real? For the career? 19K for a career. Yeah. Solid. He put up numbers. 38%. Yeah. And what, what year he played? 50s and 60s. I'm better than damn near everybody that played back then. <laughs> put your money on it. 
I put money on that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. man, I was cooking too now. Top five. I seen your highlight shit the other day. You post that shit. Yeah, I'm gonna keep giving them one every it, now and then, Matt. Just it's because you had that CHP mustache. That shit went right here. <laughs> the wrong that nigga had the straight <laughs> hey. California Highway Patrol mustache. You that nigga had cute. no other facial hair. Chips. Hair. <laughs> top five. Let me see. Yeah, top five. Center. I gotta start. Ooh, shoot. Will Chamberlain. Mm hmm. Shaq. Kareem. The Dream. And me, I'm That's putting what myself I'm talking in about. the top Talk five. Talk your motherfucking yeah, shit, come on. bro. Right, well, I'm in the shit. top five. Come I don't go. care what nobody got to say. Talk your shit. I'm in the top five. You can say I'm not top 75, but I'm going to put myself they in the top five centers. They can't say that. They can't say that. If you could see one guest on All The Smoke, who would it be? One guest on All The Smoke. Who would I want to see on here? Um... Shoot, has Shaq been on here? Y'all know mm -hmm. I'm Ron Burgundy, so y'all didn't put that Shaq on here. Shaq been on here, right? I, didn't, I stopped right there at the question. Uh, who, 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 who? Don't cheat me out of my question. Um, Put the whole thing what's down. What's the there. lady? Uh, she just did a movie. Sports or no sports? No, we don't, matter. We don't matter. Don't matter. We versatile now. Yeah, everybody. Um, Man, that's tough. Future. Ooh, Thank you. Hard. The wizard. Y'all got to get Future. That's the homie. Yeah. Y'all got to get some. Yeah, Future. Get them all. I, get, I, they get, said they was actually working on them this trip. Pluto. I don't know if they're going to end up getting him. Get but. Future on here. Dwight, man, we wanted to thank you. Uh, we're big on giving flowers on this show. We, You know I mean? I've always been a brother of yours, but really more just a fan and, and, and let you know, man, how great your career has been no matter what fucking list you're on or not. You're one of the greatest to ever do it, man, and we really appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate bro. that, man. Thank you, man. Don't, he got a, he got a, he got ADD. <laughs> we got a little uh, a box for you, bro. Hey. Showtime merch. Where can they get it? You remember? It's been a minute. Uh, no, I don't. Showtime dot store. Yeah, that's it. That's where you get it from. <laughs> but bro, we, nah, we appreciate you coming. We got some gear from for you. Uh, I know you're gonna like it. I don't know what collection this is because we have a couple of collections. You know what I'm saying, but. Thank you, man. Appreciate rock, you, bro. Going rocking with pride. Oh, Dwight Howard. <laughs> you can catch this on Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform. Black Effects, man. We appreciate you. And that's a wrap. Riggity. Your show. Oh, oh, I appreciate you, bro. We're home now, Ellie. We have to be more careful. What if this is all I'll ever be? That's not who you are! What was I supposed to do? Did my child suffer? <laughs>